Welcome back to another high yield video question bank. This is the series where I help you train your brain to recognize high yield patterns and to just frankly become a better test taker. So let's dive in. A 45 year old woman presents to the clinic with a six month history of believing that her neighbor is plotting to harm her. She describes detailed scenarios in which the neighbor is trying to sabotage her life including tampering with her mail and spreading false rumors about her. Despite no evidence supporting her beliefs, she remains convinced of the neighbor's malicious intent. Her daily functioning is relatively intact, and she continues to maintain normal occupational and social roles. There are no other significant mood symptoms, hallucinations, or disorganized behavior. Which of the following is the most appropriate diagnosis for this patient? A. Delusional disorder. B. Brief Psychotic Disorder C. Paranoid Personality Disorder D. Schizophrenia E. Schizoaffective Disorder Pause the video now if you need some time to think about this, but if you're ready, I'm going to go ahead and give you the correct answer. The correct answer to this practice question is choice A. Delusional Disorder Before I explain how you would pick this answer out, Let's look at the question stem and highlight in red what is very important for you to understand. So first we've got a six month history and we can see that the symptoms are believing that the neighbor is plotting to harm her and that there's no evidence supporting these beliefs. So in other words, this is a delusion, right? A fixed false belief. Now I underlined the next sentence because this is the most crucial part to differentiate and get this question correct. Daily functioning is intact Patient continues to maintain normal occupational and social roles. So this is the key to delusional disorder. With delusional disorder, the criteria is that you have the presence of one or more delusions that last for one month or longer. In delusional disorder, patients maintain, generally speaking, normal occupational and social roles. So although they have this fixed false belief that something untrue is happening, they work, they maintain relationships, they go to school, etc. So they're able to function and go about a relatively normal life. On your exam, the patient's probably not going to have any hallucinations whatsoever. But if the hallucinations are present, they are going to be consistent with the theme of the delusion. They're not going to be bizarre and seemingly random. Now, previous criteria for delusional disorder back in older versions of the DSM were that the delusions had to be what's known as non-bizarre, meaning that they would involve situations that could perceivably happen in real life. So things like being followed, stalked, uh, poisoned, uh, being involved with a, a lover or a spouse, things that you could see, right? These, these could be real. They're not bizarre delusions, which are very unlikely to ever happen, even in super rare circumstances. Now, the criteria in DSM-5 has changed, so delusional disorder no longer can only be non-bizarre delusions, but the point is, is that when you're taking your exam on USMLE or Comlex, in order for the test writer to give you a very fair question with a specific obvious answer, which, you know, is the criteria for writing a good question, the delusions are going to very likely be non-bizarre, which is to say that they are things that could perceivably happen in real life, like being poisoned, stalked, etc. So keep that in mind. If you're taking your exam and you see a question stem like this, where this person believes that the neighbor is plotting against her, you know, that, that could happen, although it's unlikely that could happen. So that's what's known as a non-bizarre delusion. But key takeaway for delusional disorder is that occupational and social functioning will be intact, and it's only a delusion, you know, plus or minus a very mild hallucination that's going to be on theme or on par with the delusion. But let's say that you were taking this question and you had no idea that the answer was delusional disorder. Could you look at answer choices B through E and eliminate them based on what the question gave you? And the answer is yes, you absolutely could. So choice B, brief psychotic disorder, this basically refers to the presence of one or more psychotic symptoms which occur for less than one month. 
And so it's really important when you're taking your psychiatry questions to know your timelines. The question will always give you a timeline of symptoms because so many of the different disorders have timeline criteria as part of their inherent criteria. And so in this question, we see that it's a six month history. And so right off the bat, before I read anything after six month history, I can eliminate brief psychotic disorder because I know that we're well past the criteria for brief psychotic disorder. The brief psychotic disorder, if you want to think about it this way, is basically the symptoms of schizophrenia, but only occurring for up to one month. So that's brief psychotic disorder. Paranoid personality disorder. So we've got a personality disorder, and it's the only answer choice that has personality in the name. And the key takeaway for personality disorders is that if the test writer wanted you to pick a personality disorder, they would describe to you a pervasive pattern or a per pervasive set of traits, meaning that this wouldn't just be a six month history in a 45 year old. If you have a personality disorder, you have these traits that are pretty fixed and rigid throughout your life, especially growing up. So the fact that it's a 45 year old patient who suddenly has a six month history rules out personality disorder because they would give you a very pervasive, long lasting, chronic set of distrust, paranoia, and other personality disorders likewise would have a very pervasive chronicity to their symptoms. So you can eliminate answer choice C. Schizophrenia, you want to look at the symptom timeline being six or more months. So we meet that criteria. However, this patient only has a delusion. We don't see any evidence of hallucinations. We don't see any disorganized behavior. We don't see any disorganized speech. And these are all criteria of schizophrenia. You know, typically you are going to see things like delusions, which you have, but plus hallucinations, disorganized speech, disorganized behavior, catatonic behavior, negative symptoms, and you just don't see that description in this question. So you can eliminate answer choice D. And then lastly, schizoaffective disorder in a nutshell is schizophrenia plus major mood symptoms. And that mood component can either be major depressive symptoms or bipolar symptoms. In this question, the question very clearly tells you that there are no other significant mood symptoms. And so you can eliminate schizoaffective disorder as soon as you read that. So key takeaway here, what I want you to be on the lookout for on test day. One, if you're taking psychiatry questions, pay attention to the timeline. Two, if it's delusional disorder, the patient's gonna be functioning normally and it's gonna be a non-bizarre delusion. That's very important, I'm gonna say it one more time. If it's delusional disorder, the patient's going to be functioning normally, meaning working, normal relationships, um, going to school, that sort of thing. And the, and the delusion will be non-bizarre, meaning that it could really happen, although unlikely it, it could happen. It's not going to be a delusion that, um, you know, some dead celebrity is, you know, it, it has to be perceivably possible. Um, so that's number two. And then number three, remember that for schizoaffective disorder, you're going to see major mood symptoms. And for personality disorders, number four, you're going to see a pervasive pattern of traits. So keep these themes in mind, timeline, timeline, timeline. That's the most important thing when you're taking these psychiatry questions. Best of luck.